Okay, well, let's call a meeting to order and get going here. So we have a couple of new members, I think, around the table. That's correct. Do we need to do any introductions? Everybody knows who everybody is, or we are done, or we probably should. Okay. I'm Kevin DeRosa. I work over at the Las Vegas Municipal Court as a marshal. I'm currently in the uh, field services, so I pretty much just drive around the city and try to um, persuade people to come to court who should have been in court a long time ago. Um, <laughs> I'm here representing the PPA, which is our union, of course, and uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much. Oh, we're all we're all going. Um, <laughs> yeah, so right now I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm John Crum and Las Vegas Fire. Freddie Sarner with Morgan Stanley. I'm the investment advisor and plan consultant. Edward O'Neill. I'm the first in contracts. John Medilla from the City Attorney's Office. Derek Hibbler, um, LVCA, uh, Vice President. It's resources. Gary England, Chief Financial Officer from City Manager's Office. And Jim Beasley from HR. Okay. So we have minutes from the prior meeting, third quarter 2017 review. Um, I just hope everybody has a copy of their not very long, but it shouldn't be very long to read if you need to. If everybody is comfortable, we would entertain a motion to approve. Move. Okay. Um, excuse me, quick question on the minutes. Um, it is for everybody. Uh, are, the way that we present these minutes, is this acceptable in terms of detail? Is it? Is it, is it just right? Would anybody like to see more detail or less detail? <coughs> I, I think they're fine. Yeah, it's action minutes, right? So it's not detailed minutes. Yeah. We're also recording it so if anybody has Okay. I think it's fine. So there's a motion on the table to Accept these minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number two, consent items. Yeah, so uh, it's unusual for there to be this many funds on our consent watch list for the benefit of Kevin and Derek. Um, when I get the quarterly performance, is that preparing if there are any funds that have fallen below the required 50% uh, pass rate of the uh, monitoring criteria, it's put on this consent watch to make it more efficient for the committee not to have to vote on putting it on a watch, essentially. So um, a total of seven, which is almost unheard of, but it is what it is. And, and uh, when, I, when we get to the record keepers of those funds, you, you'll see them on, in the scorecard detail. And I do have some attributions to why, um, you know, they underperformed for the quarter. Uh, and I can certainly get into that if the committee has a preference uh, when we get to those reviews. Um, but for Mass Mutual, Pinco will return off of Main Street, AMG, Nanders, Skyline, and Franklin Utilities. Uh, for ICMA, Industrial Universe by Dividend, Parnassus Core Equity, which is unfortunate because we just added it in November. Um, and then off and on Main Street for Nationwide. So is your suggestion then, then Freddie, that when we come to each of those um, plan provider reviews that we'll cover them then? Yes. Okay. Yeah. At this point you're just looking to tell us that they were automatically put on yes. the list because of our rules. That's correct. Okay. Let's get into the fourth quarter reviews then. Okay. And uh, this section is in the uh, Mass Mutual book. If you go to page six, and, and also uh, uh, considering that our meeting was postponed for two weeks, and uh, it's rare, I don't think it's ever happened that we've had, we've reviewed a quarter, you know, after the subsequent quarter has ended, and so this market review is somewhat stale in that regard, so I'm going to give a uh, abbreviated overview, and then I have something that I think is more interesting, and, and it's a... a forward-looking view of the markets. Um, but if you go on uh, page six, um, 
you know, risk markets continue to gain the fourth quarter, but by inter international markets, it appears that we're in the midst of the most synchronous global economic upturn since 2009. Morgan Stanley's bullish global equity outlook assumes earning estimates will continue to move higher as the global e economic per recovery persists and that value valuation could expand further as market participants become more comfortable with the self sustainability of this recovery. Uh, now below, uh, Morgan Stanley comes to expect uh, U.S. real GDP to be 2.7% in 2017, while uh, a couple of weeks ago it was announced that uh, fourth quarter GDP was 2.9%. So the economy is very, very good right now. Um, you go to page 7, um, some data of, of, of interest. Uh, According to the most recent uh, estimate of Bureau of Economic Analysis, corporate profits increased 4.2% quarter over quarter and are up 5.35% year over year. Inflation increased. Year over year CPI index was 1.9% in August and increased to 2.2% in November. Um, and in January, uh, it was confirmed that uh, the inflation rate was 2.1%. Um, new housing starts. Uh, in November, we're at an annual rate of 1,297,000, 12.9% above housing starts this time last year. Uh, food and retail sales increased at 5.8% 5, 5 year over year in August, 230 basis point increase since last quarter. The consumer confidence uh, increased in the fourth quarter of 17 with a reading of 122.1 after reaching its highest level it had been since March 2000. Uh, purchasing Manager Index PMI decreased, decreased as PMI registered 58.20, a 2% down to September's reading of 60.8. Anytime the PMI is over 50, it indicates the sector is expanding. Um, in January, uh, the data was released that PMI has uh, went back up to 59.1. Uh, page 8, um, you see for the quarter down below in the box, S&P 500 up 6.6, .6. uh, Russell 2000 mid caps up 3.3, excuse me, small caps up 3.3, mid caps up 6.1%, and Russell 1000 large cap stocks up 6.6%. So we'll see some very good positive earnings uh, um, and returns. November will be slightly different when we meet next quarter. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, first quarter was a little bit of a bust. Um, uh, page 9, uh, the global equity markets, um, the, the IFA, the index for developed uh, international uh, stocks, is up 4.3% for the quarter. Europe is up 2.3%. Japan up 8.5%. Um, our markets, the uh, SP 500, up 6.6%. The emerging markets led the globe with uh, up 7.5%. Uh, page 10, um, for the fixed income markets, um, Second uh, paragraph interest rates increased for the quarter. Yield on the 10 year Treasury note increased to a quarter end of 2.40%, uh, up from 233 at the end of, uh, uh, of Q4 uh, 17. Uh, today, the, the 10 year Treasury bond is at 282. And down below, you can see for the quarter, uh, uh, high yield was up a half a percent. Government bonds were up uh, one tenth of one percent. Mortgage debt securities are up two tenths of one percent. Um, so what I thought I would do that I think it's a little more interesting and you can, you know, maybe categorize this as uh, committee member enrichment and, and you can, I'll leave this behind and you can read it, you know, as you desire and I'll just highlight some, some things in it. Uh, um, so Morgan Stanley has a global investment committee. Um, you know, made up of economists and strategists and market conditions, of which I am none of those. Um, and every year they come out with new uh, capital market rates of assumption and they use these for their inputs uh, for their modern portfolios and um, they categorize their outlook into different time frames. Um, they have a strategic outlook that is based on the seven year horizon. Uh, and they have a secular outlook that's based on a 20-year horizon. Um, you go to page two, and I'll just highlight um, some text 
on the executive summary about halfway down, um, uh, the business, it's late in the business cycle, stages and, and richer equity valuations, especially U.S., likely mean lower returns going forward. Accordingly, our seven-year strategic forecast for equities is revised downward, while our fixed income forecast is moved modestly higher, reflecting higher yields available to investors today owing to better economic growth. Um, on the right uh, column on page two, uh, valuations international and developed markets largely remain modest as these regions are early in the U.S. Uh, than U.S. in their business cycle. Accordingly, strategic forecasts for international developed equities are higher than for U.S., reflecting greater potential for multiple expansion. We believe that strong performance for international equities in 2017 may signal the beginning of a new cycle of outperformance. Uh, and in the box up on top, you can see how the uh, annualized returns um, are being revised down for U.S. equities from 5.7% to 52 and so on and so forth. So, how do we, how do we, how do we understand how to read the annualized return for 17 in this table compared to the one you had in the previous document, which said S&P 500 was up 21.8 percent for the 12 months? That says U.S. equities in total, I guess, were 4.9. Okay, so uh, it did say for the year, uh, S&P 500 was up 6.6. 21.8. Yeah, well, they're revising it down significantly. So they're, they're revising down the 12 month 21.8 to 4.9? No, they're at their. Uh, the 21.8, I assume, was an actual number, right? Yeah, it was so an actual number. 12 month, 12 month yes. Number, right? yes. Yes. And, and I know there's more in the U.S. equity line here than just the S&P. I was surprised it's not double digits. Well, it, it reflects the late stage economy and uh, you know rising interest rates and, and uh, you know potential drag on corporate earnings. Um, uh, I guess are, are these, are these, is the four point nine percent represent the, the average re, average change in the stock prices, or does that represent earnings for the corporation? Um, let's see, there is something here that does talk about the methodology. Um, it's surprisingly low. Yeah. Um, the columns are surprisingly low. Yeah, for 17 or 18? 17. 17, 18 yeah. 18 projections. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I believe this, the, it's the annualized, those are their earnings, those are their earnings. Uh, projections, not actual. But they did this in March of 18, so we would probably have actual projections. Yeah, um, I think this is what their inputs were for what they projected, you know, and well, the fact that. Like yeah, because, um, you know, the, the equity index went up more than anybody could have ever, you know, really predicted. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a mention of methodology. I can I can clarify, but I, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that the that the reference to 2017 numbers aren't actual returns that have been logged in, in, in history. They were what are the committee's you know projections of, of what they were, what, what they would have been. And then the volatility index amount was 14.7, and that's an example. Is that? That's sort of a standard deviation that they would have expected the, the range of actuals to be plus or minus 14.7 from the 4.9. Yep, that's what that is. Okay. Um, because if you have 14.7, you get to about what it actually was. <laughs> yeah, um, let me just clarify. Yeah. So on page three, you're suggesting that if you need seven years or nine years, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So we can't just expect an encore performance uh, from last year. <clears throat> and then if uh, in the mass mutual book we can go to page twenty.
we currently have no funds that are on watch from last quarter. Nice thing. Go to page uh, 22. There's the style boxes with our investments on page 22 and 23. Um, on 23, I'll point out that in uh, mid-cap value, Hotchkiss and Wiley was replaced, has been replaced with Timo Price mid-cap value. Uh, in large-cap land, the Parnassus Core equity was added in November. And in large-cap growth, <coughs> Mass Mutual select offs was replaced with Clearbridge large-cap growth. And then the specialty uh, sector funds, American Century Real Estate Fund was replaced with Invesco Real Estate Fund. Uh, page 25. There's the asset allocation. And something that stands out that I think is somewhat unfortunate is that target A funds, we've got these fantastic kilo price funds that are ranked so high and they have delivered such great returns. The usage is very low. And uh, just pointing that out. 1.67% of plant assets. 24% guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. And that's 47% of the plan. Um, page 26 are the fund balances. And you can see where there's zeros. Those are funds that were replaced. Maybe for the benefit of the community, you can just give a minute or two explanation of the 4% fund that Derek just mentioned. I okay. Uh, well, I think Derek is familiar really with it because we're in that. Oh, and by the way, uh, uh, I've made notes in the minutes will reflect that Derek and Kevin received the required uh, fiduciary to create an orientation from my office. We spoke, and I think you mentioned that you had money in that 4%. Right. Yeah, so you're aware of it. Um, uh, within Mass Mutual, they have a general account, a fixed account that pays 4%, which is an extraordinarily high rate in this, in this rate environment, and uh, a lot of people are very attracted to it. But in, in, in terms of what people could have achieved had they not been in the general account last year, I think the average return of all of the other items in our portfolio was all double digit stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And also that mass mutual kind of holds us hostage to make you strong. Well, that was what Julie Hiddle used to yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. But uh, if you look at the last agenda item on the agenda, um, we can take a few guys. Yeah. Yeah. So page 27. See, we're at 165 million eight hundred twelve thousand. Page 26 before we map people over. Or after we map people over. 26. Yeah. Well, this shows. Um, it does seem to have a new one down here, right? Yeah. Everyone has this on here, for example. Yeah, it does. We didn't map anybody at the I don't think. But a couple, oh, no. A couple of those ones that were replacing Correct. something. Clear to replace something. So this is after we mapped over, right? That's right. So we all want to drop off these places. Yeah, they have zero balances, but they were still in the lineups at some point in the quarter. Yeah. Uh, now, if you go to page 31. Just a historical watch list which looks uh, pretty clean. And if you go to uh, scroll through those, not much to look at per se. Uh, if you go to page 35, here's where the real data begins. This is our scorecard detail. And uh, for the benefit of Kevin and, and uh, Derek, um, on top, these are our performance monitoring criteria, the state of the investment policy statement. Um, we want a fund to be in the top 50 percentile uh, returns within their one year peer group for over one three year period uh, and a five year period. Uh, we want them to be in the top 50 percentile uh, for alpha, a statistical. Uh, performance metric uh, within their peer group, 
uh, sharp ratio, top 50 is another uh, performance metric, uh, manager tenure at least three years, favor and equal three years, expense ratio uh, in the top 50th percentile, and uh, three year uh, outperformance of the index, we would like to out outperform the index for three and five years. And the uh, score criteria is at least a 50% passing score. Uh, <coughs> So there's a lot of good here. Hartford total return performing beautifully. Uh, PIPCO real return, um, as you see, uh, only getting a 44% uh, score. Last quarter was 67, so uh, it is on consent watch. Um, Oak, Oak Mark equity income, there's our key role price. Uh, target eight funds that are, uh, they have a lot of equity exposure compared to other target eight funds, so it's not a surprise that they're performing so well. Uh, at this observation. Uh, page 36, Hartford dividend uh, uh, and, and growth, performing great. Then uh, RSCAP Port, uh, Oppenheimer Main Street, ranked 67th last quarter, dropped to 33rd, so it's on consent watch. You can see where the, the trouble spots are. It's had a, uh, a bad year. Uh, ranked 87th in its category. Uh, last quarter it was ranked 28th, so it had a very bad quarter. Um, and then Parnassus Correct, we, we just added it in November, and uh, it's on consent watch. Um, what kind of support does it have on the other day? Well, it, uh, well, it, was, we, good, it was good, and, and I, I don't recall off it, I thought my head, but you know, we presented this this format in a fun search. and. Uh, it was very compelling. Um, and then uh, Mass Mutual Select Ops, 22 percentile, but that was replaced with Clearbridge, so the committee looked smart there. Um, and then mid cap value, Hotchkiss and Wiley, 11 percent uh, score, um, page 37. Uh, that was replaced with the fewer price mid cap value. Um, you need small cap value performing fine. Uh, AMG manager skyline. Uh, that's also on uh, uh, yeah. consent watch. I mean, the irony is it had been on watch uh, in the quarter. It performed very well. It was taken off watch, and now it's back on watch on consent watch. Um, and then. Uh, uh, frankly, utilities fund is on consent watch. Uh, I had a note uh, to look at page 53. Okay, if you look at page 53, this is just an example of, you see Franklin utilities down uh, 12 basis points for the quarter where the underlying index was up 51 basis points, and the, and the, the utilities average return for the category average was 25 basis points, and for the year up 1056 compared to 1216, 1189. So you can see how, over a period of one or two quarters, if it's really good or really bad, how quickly that can affect and roll up into the three and five year rankings. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. That's why things can change relatively quick over a quarter or two. Um, page uh, 38. <coughs> our inter old fund compared to most of the ones that were down on our list. Inception date? Yeah, it was like 1948. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a long fun. There weren't many funds around back then. No. Um, and then on page uh, uh, 38, our international stocks are performing very well. MFS International and uh, Hartford Global Growth. Uh, for the consent watch funds, I do have some detail as to, you know, why the funds have underperformed for the quarter? Is that something the committee is interested in hearing? Sure. Okay. 
It's not that they didn't perform well, it's that they didn't perform well compared to their peers. That's correct, better said. Um, So that the PIMCO will return, uh, so the tractors uh, for the quarter was a security selection in, in the United Kingdom and nominal interest rate strategies, and then in the U.S. was real duration positioning. So, you know, this fund uh, is an in inflation hedge, so obviously when rates go up and the 10-year treasury goes up like it has, it's going to put negative pressure on the value of, of bonds in a typical, typical bond portfolio. Um, and so this fund is meant to, uh, you know, hold its value or, or maybe even increase in value as rates go up. And again, just like a traditional bond fund, uh, the performance can uh, can be affected by security selection and you know where the the portfolio is positioned in terms of duration. And uh, so, in, in a nutshell, that's that fund. Um, the Oppenheimer Main Street Fund, which our large cap. Uh, Large cap fund uh, underperformance is mainly driven by company-specific issues with some of our larger holdings in industrials, utilities, <coughs> and healthcare sector. Um, specifically, neg negative contributors were uh, 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 PG&E, Celgene, and Merck. Uh, PG&E, yeah, largest utility company in California, that specific gas and electric stock have been under pressure since the start of the Northern California wildfires due to concerns that some of the company's equipment may have played a role in some of the fires. The stock saw further pressure after the company announced it would be suspending the dividend uh, to preserve cash for potential future claims. So, <clears throat> in utilities, uh, people often buy utility companies for their dividend yield, and uh, it's not, not hard to... <laughs> See if, if the company's going to suspend the dividend yield, why investors would want to maybe look at something else. Uh, Celgene, significant weakness in October, uh, from primarily due to expected revenues from uh, Ozilla, a drug testing, uh, drug treating certain types of arthritis, which accounts for about 10% of the company's revenues. Uh, and also, the secondary, there was a disappointment due to uh, withdrawal of a, of a pipeline drug. And then last, uh, uh, Merck, uh, company withdrew its application for, for European use of its biggest profile drug, Ketruda, as they chose to change the milestone for approval to overall survival. The delay in, in the approvals led to concerns that competitors could catch up with Merck's lead in uh, immunotherapy for lung cancer. So those subtle things uh, that help, you know, make up holdings can contribute to funds underperformance. Uh, for AMG Manager Skyline Special Equities Fund, uh, this is our uh, small cap uh, fund, fund underperformed primarily due to unfavorable stock selection, um, lack of exposure to high growth, high valuation stocks that drove the index's performance. Um, but this fund is constructed to own stocks the best combination of value and earnings, therefore it does not own the fastest growing small cap stocks, which typically carry you know, higher price uh, earnings ratios, make up a, a portion of the Russell 2000 index. When growth stocks significantly outperform as they did in 2017, performing well relative to the core index is just challenging. And adverse stock selection, information technology, and healthcare hurt relative performance during the quarters. And then the utilities fund, Franklin Utilities Fund, uh, performance relative to the benchmark was hindered somewhat by stock selection in the multi-utilities industry and to a lesser extent by the portfolio's lack of select independent power and renewable energy producers, excuse me, renewable electri electricity producers. Several off-index off investments in the energy sector declined in value to further erode the fund's absolute relative returns, uh, returns that their combined negative impact was mild, most significant detractor within the group was 
Canada-based energy transportation and distribution specialist and bridge. Watching in mass control. And if it isn't uh, on consent watch in ICMA. be added. Yeah, so that, that's an oversight. So it's on consent watch for on, in mass vehicle and yeah, And now we'll look at ICMA. That's right. Okay, so uh, ICMA page 20. Well, there's two funds on watch list. There's uh, uh, Vantage Point Inflation Focus uh, Bond Fund, and there's Oppenheimer Discovery. Fund category, uh, the BT Vantage Point uh, milestone funds were replaced with the American Funds Target Date Retirement uh, Funds. And on page 24, there's the remainder of the equity funds. And if you go to page Twenty-six. Uh, by comparison to uh, Mass Mutual, uh, targeted funds are getting big usage with ICMA. And page twenty-seven. Here's the fund balances and a lot of zeros. Those are the funds that targeted funds that got replaced. And on page twenty-eight. We're at 59,318,000 by CMA. And if you go to page... I saw that, yeah. <laughs> Not getting a lot of sponsorship just yet. 
Right. Uh, November, actually, yeah. Uh, on page 36, uh, Western Asset, here's our core plus bond strategy, performing great. Um, inflation focused, and point inflation focused on watch. Uh, last quarter, uh, it was ranked, or it had a pass a, a, a score of 22. Uh, it improved to 33, but still not good. Uh, we do have a fund search. Yeah. There it is. And so if you start on page five, there's the incumbent. And we have two uh, two choices, two very good choices. Now usually I would come with three. Um, but this, this category is not a very big category of, of a lot of choices. And uh, you know, we started with a few, and by the time you give it to uh, ICMA, they don't necessarily always have them available on their platform. So, uh, but I do have two uh, very good uh, candidates. Uh, if you go to uh, page nine, this is how they have screened in. <laughs> that's, that's right. Um, so AB, uh, which is Lyons Bernstein, uh, looks very uh, compelling on that slide. Uh, if you go to page uh, 10, there's the Morningstar rankings, although not a specific uh, criteria. That's right. Um, if you go to page uh, 12, uh, there's the line by line uh, performance uh, comparison and AD. Looks it's pretty, very, it's a pretty tight sector because those numbers are not very different from each other. Yeah. The 282 for the, for the year for VT. And 279 to 288, and they're all punched within a few basis points of showing. That's right. That's right. Um, Three years is quite a difference. Yeah. Uh, but the rankings are, and, and, and that small dispersion, like you said, that makes a big difference in rankings. Uh, but when you look at the performance and risk metrics, AB with the highest alpha lowest beta, highest sharp ratio, lowest standard deviation. It's not surprising why it all comes up to a five-star fund. Um, page 14 are calendar returns. And then last page 16, the cost. Uh, a, B is superior performance and risk metrics. It also comes from lowest cost. Can you what strategy Z refers to? They, it's a share have, class. Do they have 25 other share classes? <laughs> um, I don't know how many share classes, but it is a, exactly a good point, yeah. And we had to run through the whole alphabet to get to Z, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, right. Could you get us an A or a B? We should have started with Z, but. Uh, <laughs> generally always in favor of trading up, so going for a three-star fund or five-star fund when it's scoring 100 makes sense to me. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you.
hundred percent. You guys want to go to hundred percent? That's fine. So what does the police think? <laughs> it was doing better in every single category. So that's an eighty plus minute. Yeah. Well, it's just more of a question about between the two choices. I mean, they're both five star in at least two of the three categories. But scoring 100 is better than scoring 88, I think, in one of them. Yeah, and uh, it's nice to have something, you know, start with, with 100 because if something goes wrong, you've got to move to give back room. And the three and five year numbers are both top 10, if I remember right. Seven on the three year and five. I remember three on five. So there's no one to me. Nice to have a top ten fun. We don't have a nice one. Yeah. Target eight funds. Uh, talking about the top decile and, and rank, peer group rankings? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you make, yeah. make a motion then? Discussion on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, back to page 36 of the uh, review book. Perfect. Okay. Um, the Bellamy Pure Group, uh, that's our balance fund. Um, now here's, here's, here's a situation where it scores 89, which is great, but look at the, the rankings on all those categories. It's fantastic. Um, then we get down to target date funds, and when you see all the red with the vantage point, uh, it validates the decision to replace them with the uh, American funds, target date funds. That uh, continue on page 37. Page 38. Um, we have two large value funds. American Beacon is performing fine, although it didn't have a great year. Uh, there's our Invesco diversified dividend uh, that is on consent watch and some uh, attribution for that. on uh, Invesco versus I did that. There it is. Okay, so Invesco diversified dividend is on consent watch. Uh, telecommunication services and healthcare holdings are large detractors. Uh, also, portfolios, overweight position utilities, and underweight position and financial attractive for performance as well. Utilities underperformed uh, for the quarter and funds overweight in the sector attractive for the performance. Regulated, regulated electric utility company PPL Corp was the largest individual attractor. In healthcare, also underperformed drug manufacturer Bayer uh, among the, the 
detractors in healthcare. Um, for Parnassus, Uh, it was a preference uh, from Rusty. It was an old kind of holdover from Rusty. Uh, and typically, you know, we would have one fund in, in each asset class. Um, and one option might be to just get rid of the second. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, In, uh, let's see here, Murphy Heathman. That's great. Beacon, a million ninety four thousand, and uh, Invesco has seven hundred forty four thousand. Yeah, but uh, you know, I think it, something to consider is it's on consent watch, keep it there, and then we can evaluate it on another quarter. It's also been a you know quarter driven by a lot of the you know the high beta names you know the high earning high PE names you know call it more beta companies and a lot of it you know it's technology the Fang companies with like Facebook Apple Netflix and, and Google and those types of things but um, you know based on our little invest investment committee's outlook going forward um, they don't see that happening so much anymore. I would guess that next quarter we're going to see some turnaround in some of these reps because a lot of times when the manager is too conservative on the upside and he's not performing well compared to the peers and things are going up, when it starts going down, he's doing better than the peers. That, he's pretty conservative. Well, that, that's he's exactly right. Yeah, and it's, it's that very reason why we, we include uh, sharp ratio is one of the, the metrics because, you know, that's a statistical uh, measure of uh, risk-adjusted return. And using that helps us, doesn't guarantee, but it, it helps uh, mitigate, if you didn't have it, you know, you'd always be firing a, a conservative fund at the top of the market that's underperforming on the upside and also replacing uh, a more aggressive fund uh, at the bottom of the market. So. You have more fun. <laughs> well, having more fun is always a good thing. But um, <laughs> we just discussed that in the council yesterday. Back to, uh, or is there any more discussion on the investor diversified? Um, and we just can. Well, we just just moved on the walk. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, large growth, Fidelity Contra, and Kiwo Price, uh, both doing well. Wells Fargo Midcap, uh, doing fine. BlackRock Midcap, 
the growth that we find, uh, page 39, uh, managers, uh, un uh, uh, undiscovered manager behavioral va values doing great. Uh, so here's Oppenheimer Discovery. Uh, it's on watch. Um, It, oh, I beg your pardon. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah, it's Main Street Nationwide. Oh, I beg your pardon. Sorry about that. Um, Yeah, so Oppenheimer Discovery, um, the minutes indicate uh, ICMA. Uh, it indicates Oppenheimer discoveries on watch, and it actually had a great quarter. And and I have fund search, but does that dis does anybody dispute that this fund was was placed on watch? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, and I have a fund search to show, but it has had an exceptionally good quarter. And if you look on page 56, we may have had it on the same block and then kept it on watch as some of the, as it was low, but not necessarily in a consent watch category. We have all those numbers in front of the strange quarter. So it's very possible that it was coming out. Yeah, and so uh, if you look on page 56, it had an exceptionally good uh, three months that affected, you know, the, the year-to-date and one-year numbers. And, and the warnings go up, I mean, I don't think it's worth it, it's one of the more attractive funds despite ups and downs in recent years. Yeah, so, and I have four stars. Yeah, and I have a fund search to show you, but uh, you know it should actually be taken off watch because it's it's improved, mm -hmm. and so I can show you the fund search. Yeah, but okay, that will show what I'm doing with a couple of years. Yeah. That's it. Six. I'm trying to be low, sorry. Uh, we're looking at Federated MBT, Nationwide Geneva, which is in um, our other plans, not this one, and Virtus uh, Small Cap Core. And uh, page nine. Well, it, it does, but here's here's what I would point out. Um, yeah, Virtus looks good, but, but the problem was, and I and I kept this in there, but I also printed a Morningstar page that plots Virtus. Uh, this is just what I have. Uh, if everybody can look at that style box. And it plots Virtus uh, kind of touching over the mid cap space. And if you look on the, the, the presentation, and if you go to page 12, Virtus uh, versus Virtus has a really low R squared of 73, which means it's cheating. You know, it's not it's not being true to its style, and so. Uh, in my recommendation, it would be 
not to consider Virtus. So there's more to it than just, you know, the returns and, and the rankings. Um, but I just wanted to show that to you. Um, you know, I personally would not pick Virtus because of that. Because we already have good, you know, mid-cap options. Why didn't why did you put it on the tour? Um, I, that's a good question. The reason is, no, I, no the, the reason is uh, it, it's screened very well by our metrics. Um, when I looked on page 12 of the presentation and saw the R squared, I wanted to point out to the committee that you, you, know, you have to look at everything, not just the performance. Uh, it's screened in through our uh, policy statement. Yeah. So the reason is, is that you see that, that plots. I understand. Yeah. And so if you are a participant, uh, Edward, and you have made an asset allocation decision and you have a certain amount of, of your assets or portfolio allocated um, to mid-cap growth, okay, and small-cap growth, and maybe, maybe mid-cap growth doesn't do so well, and now instead of just your mid-cap growth not performing well, now you've got essentially what would be a small-cap growth fund that really looks more like a mid-cap fund. Now you've got two areas of portfolio that are doing well. And that's why style purity uh, is, is important in, in the format of, of retirement plan accounts. So, uh, But I, but I also include that after I saw this, I actually chose to leave it in because I thought it would be an opportunity for committee education and insight as to, you know, why you would want to pick it. And because that is a very low R square, I meaning it's not being true to the underlying index. Look at the top holding I mean, if there's an appetite, well, first of all, you have to understand that the, the fund that we're, you know, you could also argue that this whole conversation is somewhat moot because the, the underlying fund, our existing fund, is performing well now. would be the, the core plus bond fund, the Western Asset Core Plus, because uh, the benchmark for that is the, is the Barclays Aggregate uh, Index. And the core plus strategy, um, you know, by definition, uses non-index investments at times, like high yield and emerging market debt and mortgage-backed securities. And there is not a specific index for core plus. So that's the one exception I would make.
integration with the grace, and I, he just gives me some reservation that he just, uh, you know, way in the world. But I, and that, that's fair to say, Edward, but also, I mean, by our recent policy, it's one thing to wait in the quarter, but the fund actually deserves to be taken off one. Well, that would be the other yeah. action that we would need to take if that's what we need to do. Yeah. <laughs> but if we take it off watch, we may not come back and look at this again uh, next week. Well, that would, we, would be, might we be We would possible. have to make, make note of that we still want to look at it. We leave it on watch and not hurt anything um, right now and, and keep these keep the options open before we decide to take it off watch and move on our merry way. Everyone is just waiting to get to the end of the day. Or we <laughs> adding Virtus as a hybrid fund that sort of slots in between small and big cap and add it to our portfolio. And if, if you're a participant, you're looking at allocating your portfolio, do you think that would be additive or do you think it might be confusing? Kind uh, of on a sophisticated participant or a one who the easy stuff participant? Yeah. Well, we decided years ago that so we want to dumb down our portfolio. But we already have that. We already have that as a target. Yeah. So to me, there's, to me, there's, to me, to me we have the target date fund, which are for the person who does not want to spend any time looking at stuff. But we would have to go advertise an additional fund because before we were remapping the participants. Right now, we would have to go advertise this additional fund. So it gets set with zero dollars for ever could. Uh, and nobody's ever going to blame you for having a five-star fund. Oh, somebody will always blame us for something. Or are you going to blame us if we had a fund? Yeah. Well, I'm here to serve the committee. I don't have to vote. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I still question, um, you know, when I, when I saw this, I did the fund search because that, you know, that was a quick request of the committee, but by the same time, I was very, very pleased to see that the fund that had been under pressure, under pressure has a great quarter, and it doesn't just come to, you know, 50% passing score, or, you know, but, but, but up to, a, to an 89, and, and uh, it ranks, you know, 11th percentile over one year period. To me, that comes as great news that there's less moving parts and less one less participant notice you have to put out. Participant, oh, another change in the plan. The good news is, you know, we look at this in aggregate, and Oppenheimer is, is fine now. So, you know, I, I, in my opinion, a lot of this discussion is, is moot because all of a sudden we have a, a fund that is performing very well and is it now in compliance to the IPS? Does our, does our IPS actually list that we're desiring to have only one fund in every stock category? No. We have two in several categories. In fact, last quarter we added another hybrid fund for NASA's because it was not quite the perfect fit for any of the categories but it targets a different type of investor that puts it in a fund that um, is more of a Yep. So it's not unheard of for us to have a second line in the category. No. And I think the mo notification is easier when we're not mapping anybody that we can find that line. So I'm, I'm okay with whatever the consensus of this group is. Well, I'm going to first make a motion to take it off of. Anybody like to make a motion to 
add any other fund to this fund category. Just so I'm clear here, we're making, because I think that what you said that we should add Offenheimer to our fund. Oh, I wasn't quite that strong. I'm saying we could add it. Okay. But it's a nice performing fund. It's, it's one that Brian's showing us at this point in time. It's a top 10 performing fund in almost every category. We don't have very many like that. No, it's a morning star, five star rated fund. If you don't have that many like that either. Right. So. And it meets the need of a slightly different investor, perhaps, who's wanting to put some money in small and mid cap products, but maybe they don't have enough money to put in balls, and maybe they only want to pick one. And they might be one to pick. I'm not, I'm not personally a big fan of the initial target of the dumbest investor that we have in our whole, in our whole plan. They can just choose the target date if they want. Not to the dumbest. <laughs> <laughs> but also not to the dumbest. Well, if, the way I look at it is we keep talking about how we, we're trying to make it simple for people so they have one fund in each account. And I've said many times my opinion on this is if you want to be a sophisticated investor, open an investment account. Open a Roth IRA. Open a, your own IRA and do your sophisticated investing there. This is – we keep saying we're trying to make this a uh, – not a simple but a uh, – not entirely complex investment plan. And if we're just going off of returns, I mean, we could we could put uh, the vantage point growth and in income. I mean, it's a large cap, but it's 20, it earned 23%. It's not in the right fund box of being a small cap, but it earns more, so should we, we should put it in. It's kind of where I feel like we're going with this, putting hybrid funds into this small cap, mid cap. We're, we're going out of the actual box to add a high performing. Well, I just brought the Morning Star. Uh, now, keep in mind. You know, you know that style box right there. Yeah, that's just a, something I printed just to supplement. I mean, it, yeah. it's right on the line between small and medium. Yep. Uh, now, keep in mind, we, we do have a, a black yeah, rock. Look at that little plot there in the yeah. bottom. It's not like it's smack middle in the middle. The that's true. It's right on the line with the small. That's true. I think sometimes if we make it too simple and we start producing too much, and I've been talking to some of our members and so forth, and they're saying that they've been talking about it, all they're looking at is stuff being taken away, and we're starting to get to the point where there are some, some people that are actually more savvy than others that are saying, hey, why do you guys keep taking all this stuff away? And nothing's really been added to replace it that's better than what we actually had before in the past. Then I, I, I think we start going down that road where we're just going to have this. We'll just have a one one simple little thing, and then that be it. I actually like the idea of having a, a high performing that might be able to get small cap, and then we'll look at it and if it starts going down, then we could always we'll have justification for doing it. I don't, I don't see well, the, well the, the discussion of us taking away was not is not what we wanted to do. We had at the beginning of this uh, what um, maybe forty percent more. Yeah, there was so, a uh, ridiculous number. Different amount of right. well, there was overlap. Then right. you had then you also had four performances that right. we mapped in also had some of these uh, that had very few fund, uh, had very little fund balances right. account for. When we started looking at the different fees, and so we weren't taking away just to say we want to get down to one. If there was five in there, we might have just taken one of the portfolio funds. That's why we need to see one, two, or three in, in, in these categories. We just sort of consolidate down to one. Rusty, I, he liked two. I think two is fine in each category and give somebody a choice, but.
we also look at the amount of transactions where people did things early on. Uh, and we noticed that the majority of the people did not make transactions. So not trying to dumb it down to the dumbest, but maybe the least active right. users. Right. And uh, the active users, if they were very active users, they're going to move around right. maybe from one fund to another. So. I understand. I just wanted to say that that's right, not right, right. just some some issue. Right. Uh, I understand what Gary is saying is, is that blank. I really don't have a problem with it. I just don't want this to start being. Now we're starting to increase the numbers again because we see two or three top performers. Right. One drops off, and then we're bringing it back down or consolidating again. If we have a top performer, in my opinion. A top performer now compared to what we would map it to, or just splitting it like we saw on the other one. We have two top performers, we have 500,000 in one and 500,000 in the other. I mean, other than just the saying, well, I just wanted to have it, I don't know what difference it would make. And I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm one of the dumb ones, mm -hmm. okay? Or one of the uh, least active. Right. And as long as it's joint. Well, I already know. I don't by being here. Right. I know I can move it tomorrow, and it's going to do poorly tomorrow. Right. I saw that. Right. Uh, on a month earlier today. Are so you a jinx? No. <laughs> yeah, it just tells me what he puts it in, and I can tell. But no, you know, in, in, in some cases, <laughs> we we retained <laughs> two funds and asset classes. They were both performing really well, right. and both gave the clients. You know, in uh, but what. Edward was saying is that if early on, you know, there might have been two or three funds in one category, and one clear superior fund and the other two were clearly inferior, so we would consolidate those. Uh, but going forward, you know, we've never replaced a fund with the worst performing fund. No, and I, I wouldn't assume that. Yeah, but you know, I can tell you, Derek, that, and again, it's you know, every committee is different, uh, you know, and, and committee uh, to make decisions that. Suits, you know, the demographic of the people they represent is always a good idea. But I can tell you that, uh, in general, you know, best practices and industry trends is to, you know, find where there's fund overlap and consolidate. And when there's when there's a, a gap in the lineup, you know, plug it with a new fund and asset class that might make sense. See, the the, the concern with having more than one fund in an asset class, and it happens, is that but there's a lot of participants that, you know, really don't know what they're doing. Right. And if they look at uh, uh, the two funds in an asset class, if there's, uh, if we're talking mid-cap growth, and mid-cap growth is a really hot area of the market, well, most of the mid-cap funds are going to be performing well because the space is good, right. and they'll put half of their money in one fund and half their money in the other and think they're diversified, or if you really x-ray those two portfolios, it's likely that they'll have a lot of safe stocks in those funds. Right. So it's for those reasons why um, the best practice is considered to have, to minimize fund overlap. Right. Um, and that, that, I'd say in general, that's what we try to do. Well, other than the target date funds on our ICMA platform, we have 20 other funds. seems like not too big of a number to me. Not necessarily going to be too small of a number either, but yep. we have three that are classified as large blends, although one of them is the sort of specialty fund we had last time. Yes, and one's an index fund. One's an index fund. Yeah. So if this uh, one that we're talking about is performing high, and it's meeting all the tick marks, as far as mid cap goes, small cap, small cap, I'm sorry, small cap. Yeah. Then, how many small caps do we have at this current time? One. Pardon? One. One small cap growth fund. So, I, I guess I would have to make the motion that we would add this one to our portfolios. Or, what is it considered uh, if we add one to it? Uh, to open 
not, I'm not exactly sure what the uh, terminology is that I'm going to be making the motion for, but I'll make the motion that we would add this one. Okay. There's a motion on the table to add the Vitus car small cap core investor fund to our portfolio. Under discussion, who would like to add some comments? Or are we ready to vote? Well, I just know that from the beginning when we started this, one of the intentions were to consolidate into one high performing fund per category. And that's why we're going to be quarterly and have a watch list. And if we want to swing the pendulum back to two funds per category, we should take a broader look at that if that's what our objective was. I think our initial objective of the committee was to narrow it to one fund per category that was high performing with a quarterly evaluation of each fund for a variety of reasons. One, and I'm, because people aren't sophisticated investors, they're not going to read one star report, and they're not going to read the other documentation to make a determination of what their best choice is. And two, for ability to consolidate with record keepers potentially down the road and not have this big giant selection of funds that's going to be hard to consolidate into one fund provider potentially or two considering each So based on that, you would consider probably replacing the Alpenheim with the budget? I would prefer to see it replaced, yes. If, that, if that's what the committee objective is sort of going to be, not necessarily that we going to formalize, but that was the direction we sort of took and if you have a whole new pile of members here, so maybe that's not the direction you want to continue. You know, some of us are interested in adding, adding funds per category. I'm, I'm not so much as interested in adding, but if there's another alternative, I'm, I'm, I'm more for if we only have one, and if this one is a high performing event that meets all the tick marks that you want, why not add it? And then you know, I'm, I don't even have work funds because I do educate myself and I try to decide the fund. I just know a lot of other people look on some more expanded list and say you should be 15% small cap, 15% mid cap, and they only got another two mid cap funds. And I'm actually in favor of educating our investors. And I put the opportunity for them to sure. be able to educate themselves and know what they should do. But and I guess I, I've been under the impression because I do meet with my the, the, uh, manager. Right. To, to try to get your sure. education as far as what I might be able to go into. And I know there's some other folks that do that. There's some other folks that also watch the market more so than I would. Um, and it sounds so like we're moving more towards having some additional funds and I'm fine with that. But Derek, I'm not, I'm not minimizing the, the, the motion you made, because I respect it. Um, so it's one thing to add a fund. Um, but if there, if there was an appetite to, re, to replace the Oppenheimer with the with the Virtus Fund, it it, it, it seems like it, it, it's just uh, coincidental because now all of a sudden the Oppenheimer Fund, the incumbent fund, performed great and it's performing Didn't up to work. compared to Virtus. Well, I understand, but now all of a sudden we're ten percent below for a year. Yeah, five percent below for a year. And that just from this information, uh, you've come across a fund that performs, that has performed even better. Um, that you, would, you didn't bring it to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how ironic is that, right? <laughs> that is well, ironic. probably about time we had this discussion. Because so. it can come up on any given quarter. Thanks, Fred. <laughs> well, the other, the other thing yeah. to think about is that when we get to agenda item four, where we're going to talk about possibly consolidating record numbers, I mean, that might lead us to a whole new place, both in terms of you know fewer record keepers, but also to the whole lineup of the record keeper ultimately end up picking. Yeah. And I just went through it with Sidney Henderson, consolidated three record keepers from one and picked. I mean, if, if to me, if I was to have just one record keeper, I would think, well, maybe it makes some sense to have a slightly bigger lineup if you only have one record keeper than if you have two record keepers. Because if you have two record keepers, you can look at the fund lineup for both and decide well, which record keeper do I want to be and which one is the one that best meets where I want to go. And then we don't have complete overlap of our funds and the record keepers. We have some overlap in our Right. 
But as it is right now, other than being a firefighter, if you're not a firefighter, you can't get access to nation to nationwide. But nationwide has higher fees anyway. You decide, you know, what record keeper you're going to enroll with, and who knows what the decision is involved with that. Is it the education specialist that, that graduate first, or is it the one your friend tells you you should do? Well, that's one decision. And then we all have to decide on what's our asset allocation going to be. And now we decide on asset allocation. And now there's two mid-cap funds. Now we got to pick what mid-cap fund. Are you just going to pick the one that performed the best the last year? Is that going to be the one that's going to perform the best going forward? And it's just another layer of decisions. Um, but forward-looking, if you if you do could, are able to sell it to one record keeper, then maybe there's a, an opportunity to further, you know, justify and having more than one asset, you know, by an asset. You have a motion. There's a motion on the floor. There's a longer discussion, I think. But yeah. Somebody can call for the question if they want. Or we could. I'm not able to for the time being. You can table it for the time, for the time being. I'm not very sure, but I was just looking at the fund and uh, if it's performing and it's meeting, we're looking at something positive there. Got and although I don't fully understand, but I mean, Freddie is pointing out something at the hard square, which also. I mean, we, we provide, just so I, yes. we provided none of this kind of information, I don't think, to our planning participants and members. They have no idea that they might be able to access this sort of information for the most part, right? And in my last video, we actually provided this information, which is um, available. Did the city do it or did the record keep it? Okay. In what form? Uh, mm, workshops, uh, planned meetings. Uh, we had we had we had much more detailed minutes than was were published and available. We've always said these were available. We had told them how to get to them. I think we did maybe yeah. when we first started. Oh, sure. well, here's an example. So we, we've had the Oppenheimer discovery on blockchain apparently for a year. In the last quarter, there was an upswing in the amount of money that was invested in that product. Mm -hmm. So we didn't tell anybody it was on blockchain because we had some concerns about it, and the and the members of our plan moved more money into it. Should we have told them that it was on blockchain? We didn't.
people know that they're here. I, I've never seen a message saying so and so from ICM is going to be here on the You don't get those emails? Yeah. 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 We have a tough time with communications running on the main portal. And we can talk to David about this group has an interest in getting a placement there. Uh, they don't need much information. Are there appointments available usually, or are they all filled up? close to it, and so you get three record keepers, each record keeper has their education specialist. You've got Janet Crowell at Mass Mutual, you've got Arnella at ICMA, you've got Julie at, at, at uh, Nationwide. I think they all do you know, good enough jobs, but I, I, I tend to think that the, the environment for, for when they meet with participants is more get them enrolled, you know, maybe there's some uh, a questionnaire or risk uh, analysis that, that gets we, to we do that on the new employee benefit orientation, so that happens on the front side. Then we have the updates for one-on-one -on -one individual meetings. Okay. With employees every month that okay. we put the schedule out. So if you have an interest in being educated, you can ask there. There's not a general type of meeting where people come in and listen to those educational specialists talk about what's going on with the funds and or what's going on with the market. Now, for individuals who are close to retirement age, we have quarterly with the CFPs from each of those groups okay. that put on um, meetings for individuals who have to look at a diversification of their portfolio as they get closer to retirement age and getting into the more stable funds. Yep. So that's the, that's the thrust of those educational sessions. But having somebody in chambers every quarter talking about the condition of their particular record-keeping funds, we don't have that. Yeah, so and there's, there's, there's tremendous value in what you explained on the one-on-one of the CFPs. Um, and from my experience, uh, governments have a better delivery in that than, than 401k plans, from my experience. So, so you got that good. But I think there's a difference between what you described and general sessions about market conditions and, and the underlying funds and, and, and uh, risk measures like R squared. And, and, uh, and it, it's, it's, sometimes it's, it's hard to deliver that with three record keepers, because it's different, you know, it's different. But, you know, in, in, if you have one record keeper, you can deliver consistent, you know, consistent education um, across the whole employment base and segment it based on different stages. And uh, I think you can do it more efficiently. Well, I mean, well, but also about um, education is when somebody first gets, you know, I've lived in the city of Las Vegas for four years. So when you're first getting hired, I mean, you're getting hit with everything. I transitioned from the military where all the decisions were made for you to, hey, you know, what kind of health insurance do you want? What do you want to do with your investment and everything else? So a lot of times people will table this, oh, I'll worry about this next year, um, and then that really gets brought up, and I don't think we're doing a good enough job on education or more younger employees. Yeah, when somebody's close to retirement, if somebody jumps on the bandwagon a little too late, it's almost too late at that point, you know? So yeah. I think trying to reach out more to our, our, our younger audience or newer employees about all the uh, education, but again, about the, the market and everything else is something we should probably look at. Because I know once it's like, okay, I'll, I'll worry about this you know, next year once I get a little staple and I get my foot in the door a little bit, and then it almost becomes an afterthought of, oh, yeah, I, I need to invest more, or maybe I should relook at where my assets are okay. um, and that kind of part of it. And so, and I, I think that's a, that's a very good point. So. You know, you, you have three record keepers, um, like Morgan Stanley. We have we have participant education. You know, we have white papers. We have different things that can you know that are deliverables to participants. Um, you know, currently it's not really covered under my under the Morgan Stanley Services Agreement because that has always been you know delivered you know by by the record keepers. Okay. I'm not saying it couldn't be, but again, it, there's what's that? <laughs> there's there's you know there's two different things. There's there's meeting one there's meeting with one on one by the education specialist to enroll people, look at their asset allocation, um, 
you know, see if as we're getting older, consider changing the asset allocation for nothing to target a fund and do it themselves, uh, the CFP. And then the, the, the different thing is general education on, on, on market investing uh, that would be, you know, given in the council chambers or, you know, whatever it is, people can come, you know, come sign up and, and, and meet. Uh, but in the current environment, um, you know, what are the three record keepers would take? Because they all have the content for it. I mean, it's a matter. So people have choices about which record keeper to write in. If you dig around on their websites, I think you could find some of this kind of information by going through the various tools that they provide, although I think it's not to be much harder to find this kind of information than ICMA is, right. which is one main reason why I chose ICMA, because I like to have more education. Um, and plus, they have other, other benefits that you get out of build up your portfolio at a certain level. Um, but, I don't know, Freddie, is there something proprietary in this packet that you presented to this committee that we would not be able to share these reports with them? Um, that we wanted to do so? Well, I would have to ask about, you know, compliance. It says right here, for plan, for plan sponsoring use only, not for use with participants. Um, could we get any? <laughs> yeah. Would it be possible to get like an executive summary of these that you guys could put out that would be maybe just two or three pages and wouldn't have so much Morgan Stanley, you know, in depth stuff in it that could be part of our minutes that we could put on the, the web page to yeah, include with our minutes? Three pages or whatever they are in each one of the plans that shows you the, the, the score in these 10 categories or the score card, even. Mm -hmm. Some people have some idea of how things are even if it was just, if it wasn't every one of your your metrics, even if it was just the, we can mark you know, the final. The, yeah, we can mark it with an executive summary for further details and arrangements at the next monthly meeting with your educational specialist within the record keeper. We can do that all day. Is anyone long. curious to see how much, how many people really want more education on this? On this? That's the other thing. We could do a survey. And lastly, we did a survey about participants. We also did um, recruitment mailers to people who are not participants. Uh, it's, it's done, but mostly in governance, that there's, I think in some cases there might be some match program. Like, uh, consider like wage garnishment, or, or yeah. you might have to get it approved with each of the unions. I don't care. I'm not going to 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 Nationwide has an SDO, it's 50 bucks, and you, yeah, so you, can trade stocks, you can trade all your stocks and everything in it. And then have the target portfolio is another option, and then the portfolio is selected by the group. So you have, if you want to self-direct, you pay the higher fees. If you want to use the model portfolio that we developed, with one choice in each option here, you use the target date portfolio, so you have three options. Portfolio could be for the people who want to read and study the Wall Street Journal and the parents and everything else. And the other people who want to use individual funds rather than the target would use that portfolio and the target them. But that's way down the road. But, and that's why I'm just concerned about adding a whole, going back to adding a whole palette of funds because that's not what my ultimate objective on this committee is. Yeah, I think Gary and Fred are right to get to the item number four. We go ahead and start. I think we have We might be chasing something that. Is a little too big before we get to the conversation relative to public consultation. Right. We, we, a lot of this, you're right. I'm, I'm open to doing whatever we can and getting real estate on the portal to highlight what, it, what our record keepers can do in the form of education, taking an executive summary, pushing up the, um, the educational huh? um, reps. Are you did your RFP for the other cities you've done recently? Was there a self-directed brokerage account aspect to that? Um, Oakland County, Michigan did have a self-directed brokerage account that had a 
significant amount of money in it. So you know, the consolidation uh, from ICMA and, and uh, Fidelity, it was consolidated with Prudential, and they retained the self-directed approach account to accommodate the people that are already in it. Um, City of Henderson had a self-directed brokerage account. I think one participant was using it, and he was a committee member. And it was, and it, it didn't have a significant amount of money. Good job. And, <laughs> and, 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 and he, you know, he uh, he agreed to, you know, basically liquidate his positions in it because it was the uh, the overwhelming uh, preference for the other committee members by majority. And this is philosophical um, to not offer a self record going forward. I mean, there's a lot of opinions out there that think in retirement plan format, that's simply just not, not a good idea. Yeah, because, you know, it's for retirement, and the committee oversees a, a menu of investments under modern criteria. Uh, they're not obligated to monitor self-directed brokerage, but uh, if you're trying to, you know, keep it in the fairway with retirement, with asset allocation and all the fundamental things you can do to improve your chances of good retirement outcome, some people would argue very strongly that it's not a good idea to let people, you know, swing for the fences in their retirement plan. If they want to do it, you know, go to E-Trade, go to Scott Trade, open up something. In the private sector, I agree with you on that. When your budget spice the 75% of your salary for retirement fully funded by the city, mm -hmm. 401k money becomes like, according to the retirement people I talked to, that's like funding. We have only 5% of our potentially and our young employees. That's how young you were. Right, but, yeah, but the majority of people have 50% plus of their income being replaced by their pension. Yeah. So people may want to be a little more. They yeah, might have solved their so more so than you would in the private sector setting. Well, you can do that through a more aggressive asset allocation. Correct. In funds that are being monitored by a committee and monitored for fees and risk yes. metrics and all that stuff. All right. Um, so it's just it, it, it's but that's the philosophical uh, differences. Uh, but we do have that agenda item on uh, consolidation. But we, we, this conversation. So we could do two things here. I think we yeah. have a motion on the table. We can either vote on the motion now, or we could delay the motion until after we get through the record keeper discussion and come back to it. I don't have a problem taking it. Or you could withdraw your motion if you choose to do so. Well, I still feel pretty good about the motion. I just think it would be tabled until maybe we talk about that. Okay, let's do that then. Okay. Um, we'll come back to you. Yeah. <laughs> one, one question, because I, I want to I get a better, just to make sure I'm clear on the, the request. Uh, if there's something I'm going to do to follow up on about taking some of this information. What did you find out from your, your superiors if it's even possible to, yeah. to create a, you know, maybe a two or three page summary for each of these? that could be shared with our membership. Something that would be non-proprietary and not get you in the fire. Like return. So it's one thing for a participant to go on the website and look at funds that they have and look at the one, three, and five year numbers. Um, you know, You're afraid to do that on Mass Mutual's website. It's not easy to find. Well, there's usually fun fact sheets. It's hard to find. Okay, well, that's I unfortunate. The, uh, I use the call line. Okay. That, that to, to include uh, investment policy criteria that we use. Yeah. 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 yeah, well, that's, that's the thing about staying with the evergreen contract we have, is what, what Hartford tells you, what Mac Mutual tells you now is you're stuck with that website platform until you give us, until you accept a new contract from us, which is the 4%, then you'll get to the new mass mutual good stuff. Yeah. So back to the, uh, I see my book. Uh, on page 39, um, it's got only large uh, diversified international um, passing score uh, it's not doesn't rank that, that well in the last uh, one to three years. 
uh, New Vienna Real Estate, uh, performing fine. Uh, page 39. And then uh, New Vienna Real Estate, performing fine, and then page 40. The very last one. So right, right there is an example. There, there is another choice for somebody who wants to make a small cap. There's one right there. I think you can point to a small cap. Yeah, but that's, that's poor. You know, so that's down the middle. Mm -hmm. So we have index options. And again, this is a, a philosophical, uh, personally of, of mine, and, you know, these fund lines have been shaped somewhat from that uh, influence is that, uh, it's nice to give uh, participants an option of indexing for you know large, mid, and small if they prefer that for you know lower investment costs. And so this lineup option. But the, the fund that we we're talking about, Gary, you know, for the often on the discovery of the Virtus is a uh, mid cap growth. Uh, so that that concludes ICNI. Funds on watch in the previous quarter. Uh, page 21 and 22. Uh, the funds on page 22, uh, UBS small cap uh, growth has been was replaced with uh, nationwide Geneva small cap growth. And American Century real estate was, has been replaced with uh, Manning and Napier real estate. Page 20. Let's see, about 20% of the uh, plant assets are in the hero price uh, target date funds. Page 25 of the fund balances. Uh, notice the hero price 2060 fund, a $2,500 balance. That was a newly created fund for uh, employees that you know, recently turned 21. And page 26. And we have several yeah. year old. Uh, 42,655,000. Uh, page 30. Is the historical fund watch. Looks pretty clean. And on page 32, you see that. Uh, UBS small cap growth and uh, American uh, Century Real Estate were both uh, replaced. Uh, page 34. So the historical watch page yeah. does not include the one that gets automatically added to the top of the main street? Uh, no, but we, next quarter will show up. Next quarter will show up on the yeah. watch. Yeah. Uh, page 34, pretty good Picasso of, of rankings and score. Uh, page 35, Picasso. Yes. It's uh, beautiful. Beautiful. Like a scorecard with no bones like on it. <laughs> it could. Scorecard with no bogeys is beautiful. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's hard to come by, but it's beautiful. <laughs> I've shut under par several times, but I've never been out around without a bogey. <laughs> um, page 35. Uh, and again, there's a T row price target date funds, and they don't rank 100, which is. It's a more expensive share class than um, 
mass mutual. Uh, then we get down to Oppenheimer Main Street. And uh, that is on set watch. Yeah. Uh, both T-World Price large cap growth funds are performing great. MFS mid cap value is fine. Uh, page 36. Um, AP Morgan mid cap growth is fine. American Beacon small cap value is fine. Uh, there's that UBS that is uh, was replaced uh, with Nationwide Geneva. And uh, IV Energy, um, barely passing a 56 score. So you replaced, we replaced UBS, the one that scored a 22 either? Yes, we did, with uh, Nationwide Geneva. Which doesn't show on this uh, no, because it was done after the quarter. Oh, yeah. Um, An American Century uh, real estate was replaced with Manning and Napier. And IV International. So we replaced them at two different times. And one, one shows and one doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's the one we, we came back and we voted by email. I believe it was. That's right. Yeah. Um, Ivy International uh, and Thorberg Global um, haven't had great uh, three years, but still passing. Uh, still ranks very so. Both of them still rank very nice on five year. Uh, good alpha. Um, Pardon me? We look, we look like geniuses on the man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's Picasso. Yeah, it's a Picasso. So, we're doing our education. We can use this as a Right. <laughs> and on page 37, uh, there's our index funds. And that's nationwide. Trying to scroll, but I'm, my oh, phone I'm can't keep up with these big documents. Sorry, oh. I'm just a lowly public servant. I don't have a fancy phone. It's a relatively new case. Um, I didn't get an iPad. Who paid for that? Yeah, who paid for that? I didn't get an iPad. Which, yeah, who in the city? Whose budget did that come out of? Well, it's just a for credit. I mean, for now, though. It was just cheaper to get an iPad. Well, the thing is, just don't tell Michael Stewart with skills. IT is an inventory of his mind. Keyboard's dead, and I asked IT for his money, but they don't have They don't even know we have them, actually. But everybody who was on the community got it used to me. I didn't know that either. Because instead of us kept printing out paper, yeah, the cost to print those books yeah. for everybody was ridiculous. So, yeah, two hundred. Yeah, so well, I I did the printing, and it was like running a printing yeah. press. Yeah, well, I think we always still do it. We're still waiting for the now. <laughs> 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 anyway, the next meeting should turn the iPad. Well, that's true. I didn't even know she had an iPad. Did you give her a call? Yeah, sure. 
I can mention real quick. I need a Marshall version. If she was here today, could I ask her? Um, I would like to keep an eye on Ivy. That's pretty low at eighty two. Yep, um, has not had a competitive, within the category of competitive, uh, you know, one in three years, either a store bird, uh, but longer term, you know, still very, very solid. Um, well, right, according to your, your morning star, you had four star. Yeah. Okay. So I would I would like to put Ivy International on the watch list if I could please. I'd like to move to put Ivy on a, a watch list. Ivy International. And the foreign equity. Foreign equity. Yeah, foreign equity. The Ivy I energy we got rid of, right? Or is that one we still got? I thought we were we still got that one too. I thought we were gonna replace that one. Let's put all uh, all of Ivy. Do we do? Dilly dilly, yes. Yes. So, John, even though, just to be clear, even though they, it has a passing score of 56. I just want to keep an eye on it, if that's okay, please. Okay, yes, okay. Um, would you want to make a motion? I did, yes. Did pass? Was it voted? All in favor say aye. 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 Voted. That passes unanimously. We've two. The two IVs. Lines. It's all my fault. <laughs> Basically, if um, say the police arrest somebody, uh, and if that person bails out of jail and then doesn't return to court, or if that person does return to court and then they have certain stipulations like, hey, do something in your management, pay a fine, and they don't do any of the required items, then the judge will issue a bench warrant. So basically, every day I'll get a stack of bench warrants, uh, you know, drive to their house, drive to their work, see if they're there, and then if I find them, I arrest them, bring them to jail, so then they can reappear before the judge and answer the judge why they didn't either appear in the first place and or meet the judge's criteria. Um, so, big game of cat and mouse. So. Wedding anniversary, we got peas and carrots. So we have a carrot on his hand, and so we hold hands with him. Oh, okay. 
I don't know. We just uh, <laughs> yeah. Because you go together like peas and carrots. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we, ever since Forrest Gump came out, we've kind of been saying that, so we went and did that for our anniversary. <laughs> it's yes. Yeah. So it's weird when it's like this, or it's like, do you have an alien or is that a bug? And I'm like, no, it's like peas and pod. It looks weird that way, but yeah. His tattoo's all messed up. He ruined it. Like, and we just got this done like three weeks ago, but he was putting too much stuff um, on it, like, you know, put Vaseline or whatever. Yeah. But he was putting gloves, gloves on there, and then he was wearing gloves at work. And so it just yeah. like literally yeah. peeled off. It, it's missing a leg yeah. and an arm. Yeah, you need to let it air out. Yeah, it's he gonna, did. It's he gonna, did gonna do turn it out real bad. Yeah. He's like, I work on my hands. I said, I, I understand that, but you know, you don't put globs and globs of. You've had tattoos before, so I'm like, I don't know what you're doing. So it's just like, look, it's just coming right off. So, yeah. You're messing this all up. I know, you're messing it all up. No, we have to go get this done again. What's the problem? Yeah, it looks. Um, it looks really bad. But I did a picture of what it looked like um, when it was nice. <laughs> yeah, we have a guy that's like literally just, you could, I could walk to the shop over here. Um, the little Mexican um, restaurant that's right down here. Yeah. I mean, straight, it's huge right across the street from there. Okay. You can't even tell that, um, that he's there. Thanks, sir. So that's what it looks like together. Then, you know, yeah, then okay. you get it. So I'm not buying. Yeah. So without him, it's like, what is that on your hand? <laughs> <laughs> it's a set. Yeah, it goes together. Like, it's your parents. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this is a lot of fluidies. Talking about uh, 
days of 1% move in the equities. This is actually more normal. It's just that there's you know, virtually no volatility for the last 15 months or so. Oh, it was yesterday. Yeah, we're done with that. No, no, just this thing. Did you get one? Our whole retention policy is rubbish. You get an attachment, and like two days later, it's converted to a web page and it's gone. Really? Uh, for me, anyway. I don't know. I lose stuff a lot. If you have to co if you contact IT, they can keep your retention for no longer. So we have something that's yeah. out of FMLA, and I had a call. And I'm like, can you just change it to like at least 90 days until she comes back? So I just called IT and they're like, yeah, we just put it for 365 days and whatever for right now. I hate that. Just call me. For me, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's that it's a labor, you know, it's a labor management thing and it's, we get something from admin and it's like, these are our utilization hours and so I, okay, I've got to deal with that in a week. And I go to open it and it's gone and it's. Call IT, they can at least do 90 days. Uh, I may have to at do least, that. At least, yeah, call them. They can, they, they're not like to change it. I mean, I have, I think mine's like, it's like 124 days. That would be that would be much better. But I get so many emails with attachments that I have to go in and archive everything half the time. It's like no possible. What happened? It's been like hours trying to get it so I get my email. Uh, we've got a few. We've got a few <laughs> big offenders. Yeah. Are our special like the special events whenever there's anything downtown or anywhere in the city and they get a permit for it. Oh, 
It goes through the fire prevention, and that prevention guy sends out a plan map and scan, you know, attachments for every event. Here comes yeah. 10 megabytes, 15 megabytes. Yeah. yeah. So if we get all those, and then our PIO sends at least four emails a day. So I usually I just delete stuff, but I've got 6,000 deleted items. Then I just delete him and the guy that sends the plan, and I'm down to 3,000. It's like, well, at least I'm down to 3,000. <laughs> But I'm always scared to delete because somebody always comes up and goes, somebody sent an email where they were talking about, you know, we're going to move a rescue. And I'm like, I got that because I just keep all my emails. Yeah, and you have to go to archive and things. I don't even know how the archive manager works. I've tried to use it, and it doesn't work. Yeah, every time I've tried to use it, it's a disaster. Uh, I don't know. Wherever it is that you have to click on something to, to get on it. The weird thing is I could go to Archive Manager. There's a, um, a link in Outlook. But now they, somehow they just took away and managed. So now i got to go to the internet and then go to the link to Archive Manager from there. And then I can go and get my stuff. Hmm. And sometimes it takes a day or two for, for me to get it. So if I delete something or get rid of it, then it takes me two, like two days and then, it comes, and then it shows up over there. But it's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to go to the server first and then... It, yeah, you know, 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 you know,